Being the only Pacific Islander in the classroom and being surrounded by white children, that's when I started noticing the different textures in here and then, you know, noticing that there are white girls with blonde wavy hair and straight hair and I was always fascinated by that difference in texture but it never really seemed to bother me like I was still happy with my kind of hair and it wasn't until I went into the modelling industry that I felt like I needed to change it. I remember uh, just, you know, always being a problem when I went on shoots or on fashion shows that the hairdresser or the makeup artist always said, well, what, what are we supposed to do with this kind of hair? You know, this is really big. Do we straighten it? And so I've, I've, I'll turn up on jobs and then they'll try and straighten my hair and it, they'll underestimate how long it would take. It would take two or three hours and then they'll come down on me for having like really big hair that was difficult. And um, to me, it was like, what do I do? Do I accept my hair or what? So. Um, I went through a number of years where I would chemically straighten my hair and so it was like softer and wavier and more easier for them to deal with and that just damaged my hair so much. To have hair like mine, I can be expected to have a lot of people come up and just touch my hair. Strangers just coming up and invading my private space. I'm like, wait, are you thinking of touching my hair? Because don't, don't do it, I'll bite your hand. You die if I deny you. I know you've been waiting. Isa, Isa. Uh, I grew up with a little F, but one of those bone in your nose Fs, it was really tight. I used to be called Michael Jackson, and I used to be so ashamed. And then I started bleaching my hair and straightening it and um, relaxing it. And we all know that if you're an island girl and you relax your hair in the sun, it goes like this. Music, my afro is really special to me because um, EJ Strixon, she was encouraging me to have my natural hair out, not to straighten it, not to relax it, and I told her, eh, no. <laughs> one day for Wonderful, uh, um, my, my track Wonderful many, many years ago, um, <clears throat> I thought I was going in to get it straightened. And I came out and it was this massive afro and I was crying and I felt so ashamed to look like um, a bulla bulla Fijian and she just spoke to me and she was telling me to be proud of my hair, to be proud of my natural hair, to rock it, have your own sway. And that's why my hair is special to me. But I don't mind if it gets shaved off because it's just hair, it grows back. Um, my name is Daisha. I am Black American Samoan, and I love my hair because um, it's blonde, short, and curly. There's not a lot of people with um, Negro hair in New Zealand. I love that not only boys can rock short hair. <laughs> it's um, well, it's a lot louder than I am. I'm actually a very quiet person, um, so it does a lot of speaking for me, I guess. It's big, I get to hide behind it. Um, I'm actually not that great with being out in the public. Uh, and my hair, oh my gosh, I've only just started to accept that it is what it is. So yeah, it's kind of like a, a type of mask. Yeah. The thing with Tongan girls here is it's thick like horse hair is the only way I can describe it. So I think from an early age I kind of thought I'd be prettier if I had straight hair. I used to tie my hair up into a bob and have it up here and imagine what I would look like as a straight balangi kind of style bob. So I think I was on my knees praying every day and for the ceramic hair straightener to be invented and when it came along when I was 13 I was like praise the Lord because I was using the ironing board for ages and thank God for my brothers who helped me out. 
we would lie my hair down flat and my head would be on the edge of the ironing board and my brother would hold it down and he'd be like, okay, pull. And then I'd like pull my hair for ages until it gets to the end and that was the only way we could straighten it. When you dance, having long hair is the best thing you can do. It follows the movements, it just enhances the performance. You play with it a lot. It brushes against you, it adds that wild side, that animal, like a mane, a little bit like a mane, yeah. It, it's just, it follows the movement, it dances with you, it's, it's in your face, you notice it, you play with it. I went to visit my grandmother and my grandmother loved that my hair was in braids and she cut some of her hair and she twisted it into my hair. And then my grandmother passed away so I didn't want to cut my hair. Each of my children, when they cut their hair, I've added it. And now their children, my grandchildren, I've got their hair also in my hair. The novelty is 20 something years ago, I think it was only Mr Marley who had dreads that I knew about. I'm repping for the Chinese Samoan sisters with straight, thick, beautiful hair. Unlike my two other sisters who have mini, mini noodles hair. Every day at school I would just have braids, my hair would be pulled by every woman in my family just in an effort to make it stay in place. My aunties and my mum would make all these noises and grunt when they're doing my hair like it was an issue. But then when we'd go out everyone would say, oh your daughter has such beautiful hair, look how thick and straight it is, oh not like your other two daughters. I'm like, oh man it grows. Uh, it grows, it has its own mind, and I just allow it. It's hard to describe. People of other cultures constantly ask me about my hair, which I find so weird, because we live in Aotearoa that has everybody, and I don't look at myself as something different, but on a daily, I'm constantly asked about my hair. With all the mixed blood, it's created this most amazing pool of people and um, from that has come people like myself with hair like mine. I grew up in Samoa, so having very curly hair at a local primary school was quite difficult, so I did get mocked. I was called Ulfe, which was octopus head. Um, to the day that box still lives. <laughs> It's probably the only physical aspect or physical trait that I have that is Tahitian, that looks Polynesian. Uh, yeah, I'm really white. So. <laughs> you use your brother's dax to make it all straight at the roots. The Palangi girls and everybody else is hair flowing in L'Oreal, but you've got your ironing straight dax hair like this. It's humid and dax is going down your face, so it was actually the curse of my life. I have people that come up and actually physically sort of pull it like this. It's like, hmm, if you could just get your big fat pork chop fingers off my head. Or at the movies and people behind me would say, lady, can you just take off your hat? And it's like, okay. And when I used to go to the prison for visits, sorry to my friends in prison, uh, the guards would check it. I'm not sure, you know, what you thought I could hide in there. Would unravel it coming through the airport um, and then when I, if I go swimming in Samoa, I cleared the beach because they thought it was an octopus. So when I was younger, my mum would braid my hair every single day without fail. So I said to her, Mum, why can't I just have a ponytail like my sister's? She said, Crystal, you know what those balangis are going to say? They're going to say, those Ari girls give them the ukus. But your hair gets braided every single day. And that's how I know you don't have ukus. So if you come home and your braids have fallen out again, you're going to get it. I just have to rep my Asian Polynesian sisters out there. And we're just as Polynesian as they are. Our hair is just different. Okay. It just bees. And it's hair.